Welcome to Brainy Face Project. This is Michael from Binary Cafe. I've got a tutorial for Photoshop here, so this is gonna be fun. I did a review of the Sony DSC HX300 camera and pointed out the fact that the camera has this mode where you can do panorama shots, which isn't new to the Sony line of cameras, but they did add an additional feature to the panorama mode. And if I go in here to the camera to panorama mode, what I can do is I can press menu and when I go to menu I can see I've got panorama shooting scene and I want to do the eye sweep panorama but go down so I can set the parameter for this feature and I'm going to go over to 360. This allows me to hold the camera up and basically just rotate around in a full circle to capture one panoramic shot that's 360 degrees. Now when you do this make sure that you hold the camera steady and just go around in a circle moving at a constant speed and and you want to make sure that you keep the horizon level and try to get some sky in the picture as well. And it doesn't need to be perfect. I'll show you how you can go in here and take an image that you shot with 360 degree panorama and turn it into this cool effect which is kind of like a city or a planet floating up in the sky. This effect has been around for a couple of years and when I was reviewing the camera I was reminded of this because of this cool 360 degree mode. So. The Sony DSC HX300 makes it easy to shoot the panoramic shot, and now I'm going to use Photoshop to manipulate the image. So what I want to do is open up the file, and I've got a JPEG image here, which is probably going to be pretty big. If I go to Image on the menu, and I go to Image Size, I can see that this image is 11,520 pixels wide by 1,080 pixels high. So this is a large panorama. It's really cool that you can capture this much of your horizon and it does all of the stitching seamlessly inside the camera. This is just what I have. I didn't have to do any work to get to this point. But now that I have this image, I do need to go in and do a little bit of cleanup here to make sure that I've got a good image. Now, the first thing I need to do is correct the horizon because when I shot the picture, I tried to keep it as level as possible, but it looks like on the left-hand side, that's a little bit lower than over here on the right-hand side. So an easy way to do this is to go over here and choose underneath the eyedropper tool, there's a ruler tool. If you choose the ruler tool, this allows you to do measurements but I don't really care about measurements right now. What I wanna do is basically just click and hold my mouse button down at the bottom of the bushes, which will indicate my horizon for me. That's my match point A. And I'm going to hold my mouse button down and just draw a line across the screen. I can see it's angled a little bit. I don't know what the value is, but I go underneath the bushes on the right hand side. I let go of the mouse button and it drew a temporary line on the screen. What I can do now is actually rotate the image so that it coordinates between those two points by going to image, go to image rotation, and go down to arbitrary. The value that shows up in this box here is an automatically calculated value based on the line that you drew. So you don't need to change this. Actually, you shouldn't change it. Just click OK. What it's going to do is basically make sure that this is a straight line all the way across the screen. So that's pretty cool. It's an easy way to straighten your images. I've been using that for years. I really like doing that. So now that I have my horizon straight, I'm gonna to go to my crop tool. I'm gonna to make sure that the values are clear. I'm going to click clear because I don't wanna actually force the width or the height or change the resolution of the image. And I'm going to click and hold my mouse button down and I'm going to drag so that I don't have any of that white space that white space showed up when the image was rotated and I've got my bounding box around the crop. Now if you take a look, I've got two of the same building. So the camera said, okay, well, you must be done turning around in a circle here, but I can see that there are two of the building and I wanna turn that into one building. So if I click and drag over here on the right hand side, of the screen, I'm going to take that bounding box and put it to the right edge of the windows there or the corner of the building. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here and 
that gives me my crop box. So now I can double click inside this box or hit the enter key or click on the check mark to commit to the box that I drew. And now I've got my cropped image. So now this is the really cool part here. Um, all you have to do is go in to image, go to image size, and then you're going to take the value that's up here for the width and you can be lazy if you want to just highlight it and do a control C on Windows or command C on Mac and then I'm just gonna go to this box and do a control V on my Windows computer you could also type in the value but what you're basically doing is you're saying I want a square and you need to make sure that when you go into this box that this is deselected you do not want to constrain proportions because that will maintain the aspect ratio between the X and Y axes and it's gonna basically just adjust the image you do want to stretch it now if you had constrained proportions already selected before what you can do is just hold down the alt key on the keyboard that actually changes the cancel key to a reset and you can just click reset and that'll bring back the values that were in the box originally and just make sure that constrained proportions is deselected and this time I'm just gonna type this in here so that the values match when I click OK it's going to stretch the image and I'm gonna fit this into my screen by holding control on the keyboard and pressing zero and that just fits it to my view and that looks pretty horrible but what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take that sky I'm gonna flip it 180 degrees by going image rotation 180 degrees and that is important because I'm going to apply a distort filter and I want to make sure that the sky is at the bottom because that actually is going to indicate the outside edge which will give me a floating planet in space in the cloud so I do the 180 degrees it still looks horrible but now it's an upside down horrible image and this is where the cool part comes in I choose filter go down to distort and then choose polar coordinates. When I do that, I'm going to use the default options in this box, making sure that the radio button for the top item, rectangular to polar, is selected. Don't worry about what this looks like in here. You can click and drag it around if you want to, but we don't really care what that looks like. What we want to do is just click OK, and voila, we now have a floating planet. This is Atlanta, just down by the uh, Georgia Aquarium and the Coca-Cola Museum, and now I've got it floating in space and that just looks really cool so I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup here I could stop and be done with this but I want to show you a couple other quick effects one is when I shot the picture I had a couple people and that's actually my wife and son it's hard to make sure that people are outside of the frame when you're doing a 360 degree panorama because basically you're turning around in a circle you're gonna get everybody around you but let's just for demonstration purposes remove them and I don't want to use a tool like the rubber stamp tool or any of the cloning tools because if I zoom in here I'm holding control on the keyboard and pressing plus I can see that what happened happened is the lines on the wall actually created this nice kind of radial pattern and if I use the clone stamp tool those lines are not gonna match those angles are gonna drive me absolutely crazy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this lasso tool and I'm gonna make sure that it's selected on polygonal lasso tool and what that allows me to do here is to just click and let go move my pointer click and let go move my pointer click and let go and then if I move this over here what's gonna happen is I'm gonna close off this loop and I can see if I move my cursor towards the uh, origin point there where I started I got that little circle I'm gonna click and that closes off the selection so now this indicates my selection and what I want to do is transform just the selection so that dancing box and I do that by choosing select and there you go makes sense transform selection now if I move my pointer by using the mouse here I can see that I have the ability to rotate this box but I don't want to do it right now because it's going to use this center point point. and if I if I click and I drag right now it's just gonna move that box around that center point so what I want to do is click and drag that over towards the right top section of this box and when I let go 
Now it's going to say if you do anything to this box here, this selection, you're actually going to move it around this point. So if I click and drag, check that out, I'm actually rotating it around that point. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I let go, I can see that I've got my dancing selection there. I can commit to the changes by clicking on the check mark up here. And now I've got this selection. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into its own layer. Up until this point, I've only had one background layer. But I'm going to go up here and I'm going to choose Layer. I'm going to do New. And I'm going to say Layer via Copy. And it's not going to look like anything happens here. But what actually happened is I created a copy of those pixels on its own layer. And if I press Control T to transform that layer, what I'm going to be able to do is just swing this back into position. Again, I want to take this center point and move it to the upper right hand corner because I want to rotate about that point instead. And check it out, when I click and I drag, I'm moving just those pixels and I'm rotating perfectly. So now when I click OK, I can see that those lines match up nicely to give me a simple effect. And that looks good. So I'm just going to flatten my image right now. So I'm going to take those layers and flatten it down. And when I do that, I've got one single background layer. And I'm going to go in here to my Clone Stamp tool. And I'm going to hold down my Alt key on the keyboard. And I'm going to define a point there because I've got a little bit of an edge that I just want to clean up. So Alt click. And I'm just going to move that over there and click. And that just rounded that out a little bit better. I'm going to press the left bracket key on the keyboard to reduce the size of my brush and just clean up that point right there. Maybe do a couple more. And that looks good. Not going to worry about that. That actually looks kind of cool. So I like it. I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard and press zero. And now I've cleaned up the people in the middle. But let's just go ahead here and trim the buildings. And I'm going to do this really quickly by using the polygonal lasso tool again. And I'm going to click and drag. So I kind of have a little bit of a corner that I'm creating on this building. And I'm creating a selection here. Again, when I get close to the origin point, I get the little loop. And that closes off my selection. And then I'm going to use my clone stamp tool again. And I'm going to select from the clouds over here. I'm just going to duplicate that over the building. So if I hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, that defines my source point. So I'm making a copy there of those clouds. And now I can just click and drag. And notice what that does is it restricts what's happening to inside that bounding box. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key again, click to define a source point, And I'm just getting rid of the building up there. All right. So now I can turn off that selection by holding down control on the keyboard and pressing D. And I can see that I've given myself a little square edge on the building. And I could do that around the other points of the image as well. For example, if I wanted to clean up a little bit of the tree here, I could use my clone stamp tool. And I could just change the size of the brush, hold down the Alt key to click, and I could just go in here and clean up a little bit of that tree as well. All right. Um, let's see. The last thing I want to do is I'm just going to punch up the saturation here just a little bit. So I am going to go down here into the bottom of the layers palette. And I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm just going to click and drag to give this a little bit more punch. I'm going to drag that saturation over here. Uh, plus 26 looks good. And now I'm going to save my image. And I'm going to call this Planet Atlanta and save. All right, so that is the first Photoshop tutorial here on Brainy Phase Project. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or you want to see more tutorials on stuff like this, just let me know. Thanks for watching. Take care.